Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to General Motors' Symphony of the Air. Before Dmitry Mitropoulos conducts the NBC Symphony Orchestra in today's program, we of General Motors extend to all of you a sincere wish that your Christmas will be a merry one and that you'll have much happiness in the year that lies ahead. With a special greeting for the men and women of General Motors, both at home and abroad, who are still serving our country. For today's program, Mr. Metropolis has chosen to bring us three works. The chorale prelude, We All Believe in One Creator, by Bach. The quartet number two in F-sharp minor, with soprano voice, by Arnold Schoenberg. And the Ozark set, by the young American composer, Ellie Siegmeister. Our soloist in the Schoenberg Quartet will be Astrid Varnay, well-known Wagnerian soprano from the Metropolitan Opera. Mr. C.F. Kettering, Vice President of General Motors, will not be with us this afternoon for his usual informal intermission talk, but he will be back on next week's General Motors Symphony of the Air. Bach's organ chorale prelude, We All Believe in One Creator, is a massive fugal treatment of a 16th-century Lutheran hymn based on the Nicene Creed the great step-like figure that strides upward at the close of each statement of the chorale melody, plus the overwhelming climax at the end, has led Bach scholars to label this particular chorale prelude as the giant fugue. The orchestral arrangement of the music in today's performance is the work of Hermann Bersenroth, librarian of the Minneapolis Symphony Orchestra. Dimitri Mitropoulos is making his entrance now. And after acknowledging the applause of our audience here in the studio, he conducts the NBC Symphony Orchestra in Bach's chorale prelude, We All Believe in One Creator.
Continuing today's General Motors Symphony of the Air, Dmitri Mitropoulos and the NBC Symphony Orchestra bring us the quartet number two in F sharp minor with soprano voice, opus 10, by Arnold Schoenberg. The creative work of Arnold Schoenberg, born in Vienna in 1874, now living in California, stands today as a living symbol of the problems which symphonic composers faced at the turn of the present century in their attempts to discover new resources for musical expression. While certain composers have sought to achieve the rhythmic emancipation of concert music, while other composers have sought to find fresh inspiration from the wellsprings of the world's folk music, Arnold Schoenberg has taken it upon himself to explore single-handed the ultimate possibilities of harmony and its implications for the future of musical composition. And thus we find Schoenberg's youthful works like the string sextet Transfigured Night and the cantata Guru Lieder saturated with the rich orchestral coloring and harmony of Richard Wagner, while in his later compositions we find a freedom, fluidity, and subtlety in the use of harmony and melodic figures that make the first few hearings extremely difficult for the uninitiated listener. In the second string quartet, which we're to hear today, we still have the youthful, romantic Schoenberg, though the music does represent a definite advance in technique over the earlier Transfigured Night and Guru Lieder. Written in 1907 and 1908, the second string quartet combines within its four movements a highly subjective and mystical expression of intimate human emotions, plus a fabulous, formal mastery of its musical material. The first movement is terse and laconic. The second is a grim and spectral scherzo, with overtones of sardonic humor being provided by quotation of the old Viennese street song, Ode Oliva Augustine. The slow movement consists of a theme and five variations, during which the soprano voice sings the yearning lines of Stephen George's poem, Litany. And the final movement again calls on the human voice, and amid a harmonic atmosphere evocative of the utmost freedom and exaltation, we hear the soprano in another of Stephen George's mystical poems, Transport. Although Schoenberg wrote his second string quartet for the usual combination of two violins, viola, and cello, today's performance will be played by the entire string section of the NBC Symphony Orchestra and in the composer's own arrangement. Astrid Van Ay, our soprano soloist, will take her place shortly in front of the orchestra. Here is the applause signaling her entrance along with Maestro Metropolis. In just a moment, we shall hear Dimitri Metropolis conduct the second string quartet in F-sharp minor with soprano voice by Arnold Schoenberg.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Dmitry Mitropoulos and the NBC Symphony Orchestra, the Astrid Barnai, a soprano soloist, has just been heard in the performance of the quartet number no. two in F sharp minor, Arnold Schoenberg. Master Mitropoulos and Miss Barnai had retreated to the wings, but they're called forward by the applause of our audience, and here they are joining the members of the string section of the symphony orchestra who performed this selection. Before we bring you the next number on our General Motors Symphony of the Air, the Ozark set by Ellie Siegmeister, we pause briefly for station identification. Dimitri Mitropoulos and the NBC Symphony Orchestra conclude today's General Motors Symphony of the Air with the performance of the Ozark set by the American composer Ellie Siegmeister. Mr. Siegmeister, a native New Yorker, is no stranger to our listening audience, for Arturo Toscanini conducted the NBC Symphony Orchestra a little less than a month ago in the premiere of his Western Suite. Like the Western Suite, Ellie Siegmeister's Ozark set derives its inspiration from our wealth of native folk songs. In this instance, dance tunes and religious songs from the locale of the Ozark Mountains. The music had its first performance last year with Dimitri Metropolis conducting the Minneapolis Symphony Orchestra. The composer has described the four movements of the Ozark set in these words. First, morning in the hills, a quiet backcountry landscape, the stillness of dawn, the gradual awakening sounds of early morning, the full warmth of daylight as people start the daily round. Next comes camp meeting, the lively sounds of a camp meeting in full progress, the enthusiasm, the wild exuberance of a great crowd roaring, stamping, singing, and shouting. Snatches of joyful camp meeting tunes mingled with the laughter, cries, and hallelujahs. Lazy afternoon is the title of the third movement, the feeling of lonely valleys, open fields, and prairies, of men working slowly, taking time off to enjoy the warm sun, the sweet smells, and quietness of a summer day. The finale is Saturday night. When Saturday night rolls around, there's the inevitable square dance. The fiddlers scrape out a lively breakdown. The caller shouts, the boys swing their girls. This is the night to blow the lid off. The NBC Symphony Orchestra under Dimitri Metropolis is heard now in Ellie Sigmeister's Ozark set.
High spirits, lively accents of the fourth movement Saturday night. Nelly Sigmaster's Ozark Set, played by the General Motors Symphony of the Air Orchestra under the direction of Dimitri Mitropoulos. I understand that our composer, Mr. Sigmeister, is in the audience, and Master Mitropoulos is bowing now to the applause of our studio audience. I guess Mr. Sigmeister is too modest to step forward and share this applause with him. And so to the end of today's General Motors Symphony of the Air with the NBC Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Dmitry Metropolis. Here is Mr. Metropolis again, called forth by our studio audience's applause, and the men of the orchestra have risen with him to share it on this holiday program. Earlier on today's program, we heard Bach's chorale prelude, We All Believe in One Creator, and the second string quartet in F-sharp minor with soprano voice by Arnold Schoenberg. Astrid Bernay, soprano of the Metropolitan Opera, was heard as soloist. 